Ted Forbes here from The Art of Photography. Welcome to another edition of the vlog. I am vlogging every day this week, um, except yesterday where I released a podcast episode. And uh, anyway, on a dare, I'm doing a vlog. So if you're not sick of looking at me yet, um, uh, we are doing an episode every day this week. This is different than the regular podcast. I will probably do a vlog episode tomorrow that goes into the podcast feed uh, because there are a great number of people who watch this on iTunes only and they don't even know the vlog exists. They won't follow me on Twitter. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so we'll probably do something like that. Um, I've been kind of running off the cuff most of the week. I think most people have been enjoying that. I don't prepare these very much. I just turn on the camera and go. I'm pretty excited to get home from work and pull this off because it is a lot of fun and it's been a lot of fun to get into the comments with people because I think I've had more discussions with people than I generally have on YouTube uh, through the regular podcast which is kind of cool uh, but anyway I've taken some requests since the first vlog episode and I'm kind of working through some of those because like I said I'm willing to do anything um, I'm trying to keep my vlog obviously very photography related and being off the cuff it's hard because I'm used to getting into form formal subjects but uh, somebody there's been several requests to go through the camera closet which I can't believe you even know that I have. I, it's not actually not a closet. It's a series of plastic tubs um, that store cameras that I've collected over the years. I am not a camera collector by any stretch of the imagination, and I probably will get some information about these cameras wrong in this podcast or in this vlog episode. So feel free to correct me. Leave a comment below if I say something that's ridiculous or outlandish or foolish or I mispronounce things. I'm going to try some Russian on you in a minute, which will be kind of cool. Um, but somebody had asked that I cover, I did the Voigtlander best, the last time and somebody had asked about old Russian Fed cameras and I don't know if they saw some of my photos on Flickr from a long time ago but yes I do have some old Russian Feds which I'm holding in my hand right now and I, I always call it a Fed it could be an FED, FED I don't know Fed is the initials for and here comes my Russian wait for it named after Felix Edmundovich Jasinski is that right Jasinski founder of the Cheka and uh, anyway I know very little about um, uh, how Russian labor worked at that era. But these cameras were essentially made, and I believe Wikipedia may be wrong on this, uh, from about 1934 all the way to about 1990. Uh, most of the classic cameras are kind of are mid, early to mid period um, that I've got anyway. Uh, I'm really not sure on the years, so feel free to correct me if I've said that wrong. Uh, but it's interesting, and, and this isn't wrong, but um, how much, it, when you get into the history of photography, how much, as far as camera production goes, that World War II really changed things? I know in the United States, uh, especially with TLRs, twin lens reflex, and I have some of those I can show you too, but that's another episode. Um, uh, with TLRs, uh, you know, Roloflex being the major manufacturer that did that really well, well, they were a German company, and so with the war going on, uh, imports of German products uh, ceased, needless to say, and uh, during that time, and I believe the same was true in Soviet Russia. So. In other words, they're not going to get their Leicas uh, anymore. So the, uh, the Soviet Union actually started producing uh, these Fed cameras, which early on were very crude Leica copies. They're cool, though. They're built like tanks. Uh, and by crude, I mean that they're not exactly like us. They're, they're, they're not matching up 100%. Uh, the lenses are different than Leica lenses. Uh, I'll talk about some of those differences in a minute. Uh, there is a myth that uh, child laborers built these cameras, which is completely false. Uh, the, it gets confusing because the manufacturing facility that made the feds is a former orphanage facility. And But uh, to my knowledge, no children you made these cameras. But, uh, you know, for what that's worth. This is a fed one and I'm probably it's probably FED I don't know I just say fed this is a fed one it was a copy of I believe actually a Leica 2 the biggest difference is there's some mechanical differences inside the camera that just are not as smooth uh, and the lens actually a lot of people believe that these are Leica Elmar copies and they're not it's a Zeiss Tessar design and I just know that from looking it up um, like I said, none of this means a hill of beans difference. If you're a good photographer, you're a good photographer and you can make things happen. Uh, these are very cheap, they're very inexpensive, and I got into them in a period where I wanted to get into more street photography and I thought ah, I really needed a Leica to do that. And I looked at what a Leica costs and I thought, well, there's no way I can afford a Leica. So I never bought a Leica. And so the feds were a really nice, inexpensive alternative. There are other cheaper range finders that are probably a little easier to use than these, but these are fun to collect because they're very inexpensive. They all do have detachable lenses. Um, the lenses usually are either Indostar lenses or Jupiter lenses, and they made them in different focal lengths. Um, I only have 50 millimeters on these. I did not get into collecting. I had, didn't have a whole lot of money at the time, and uh, I don't know. I could have bought a lens instead of buying four or five bodies that I bought, but anyway, that's what I did. So mine all have 50 millimeter lenses. Um, this early Fed one actually has a it's 50 millimeter 
f3.5 is the widest aperture, uh, so it's not as uh, wide an aperture as some of the later models. This has an uncoupled rangefinder, which I will explain. It basically means there are two viewing holes in the back. Viewing holes, do you like that? It's very technical. So you can look through these. One of them, much like the Bessa that I showed you yesterday or two days ago, uh, one of them is for focusing and the other is for composing your image. Uh, they do not have built-in light meters. You need to meter on your own. Uh, you can, it does have a cold shoe on the top. And so if you can find an old Leica meter that still works or something like that, you can certainly use one on here. Um, I never did. I'd use Sunny 16 or I'd meter with, a, with my handheld meter. Uh, but anyway, that's the Fed One. Um, this is a very similar looking camera, as you can see, but maybe a little nicer built. This is a Zorky. And Zorky is another big camera manufacturer out of the Soviet Union from that time period. Uh, Zorky were built in a different plant. They were not built in the same manufacturing facility. In my opinion, they do definitely feel different. And the Zorkies are a little easier to use. They're a little smoother. Um, and that's not saying much because they're both kind of like, you know, they could crush walnuts, uh, loud shutters, the whole thing. Uh, again, uncoupled rangefinder, which means you have two, they're not coupled. You have two uh, viewports. There's one for focusing and there is one for composing your shot. Uh, very similar camera, just a little bit different feel, a little bit different build. Uh, the Zorky factory later, I believe, became the Zenit factory, the Zenit. I don't know how to say any of these things, uh, which you can also find those cameras as well. Um, they're kind of closely related to Nikons, maybe SLR format types of stuff. Uh, moving up a couple years later, this is another camera that I actually used a lot um, when I was shooting. This was my favorite, and this is the Zorky 3. And I did a little modification to this. Um, show you another difference here too. This one has a little faster lens on it. I believe it says F2, but it, it turns past. So I'm thinking it may be 1.8 or so F2, that range. Um, I added, this is actually a Leica viewfinder onto the top, which allows you to change for the focal length of the lens. And like I said, I never bought any other lenses, but it's a little easier to compose with. Um, if you wear glasses, uh, you might want to cover these with uh, with rubber or something because they will scratch your glasses, which is not good. Um, but anyway, that's a modification I did, and it's really for cosmetic reasons and look. And this was actually a really smooth camera that I liked using a lot. Uh, I'll do like I did with the Voigtlander, and I'll put together a gallery of images that taken on Feds and Zorkis that... Uh, no, Russian 35 millimeter, if you will. Another big deal here too is the, the Fed is bottom loading the Fed one and the Zorky one is two, which means you take off the bottom plate and it, it, if you're ready for some real fun, you cram your 35 millimeter and you have to string it along the back edge where the focal plane is. You tear it apart a handful of times and you finally get it wedged in there and a couple you know wasted rolls of film later, you're ready to shoot. Um, Again, they're, they're fun to collect and a hassle to shoot on, but they do get some fun results. Um, but like I said, and you know me from the podcast, I'm more interested in what you're thinking than what you're shooting on. Um, and that goes for myself too. So anyway, the Zorky 3 and the later models, I don't have a Zorky 2. I think the Zorky 2s and the Fed 2s were rear loading. They don't always parallel. They did for a while. The Zorky, I think there's like 12 models of those and they're actually six models of Feds. Uh, the last one was never produced, but a prototype was made. I will show you the other one. This was actually the first Fed that started my whole gear acquisition syndrome addiction here to Russian era cameras or Soviet era, cam Soviet era Russian cameras. So it's been a long day, sorry. Uh, this is a Fed 5B and again, no meter, but a little bit easier to use. This one actually has a shutter you can cock and not a dial you wind, if that makes a difference. Uh, still, a, this one has a Jupiter, I believe, or an Indostar. Indostar, this has got the N. Uh, 50 millimeter lens and this one it opens all the way up to 2.8 so it's not quite as fast uh, but actually an interesting story about this camera um, you know I grew up shooting film uh, digital cameras became available and I remember putting a lot of money into my first Canon Digital Rebel which was one of the early consumer cameras that was digital and from there I shot for a while and I really missed shooting film and I didn't have any film cameras that weren't point and shoots at that point. And so I really wanted to get a mechanical camera and, and kind of get into this stuff. Well, the Lomo stuff had come out at the time and I remember buying two cameras on eBay, one of which was at my first Holga and the other which was this one. And I bought it for like $12, I think, from a guy in Ohio. I don't know why I remember that. Uh, anyway, the Fed 5B, very cool camera. This one has a coupled rangefinder, which means, and the, the Zorky 3 did too. 
uh, which means you can compose and focus from one viewfinder, which is very handy. Uh, uncoupled versus coupled. Um, the technology to deal with parallax and stuff like that hadn't come along, and so anyway, the later cameras do have coupled rangefinders, which is nice because you don't have to move it around, and you can shoot a slight bit faster. But again, no meter. Now, the Fed 5, there's a 5C, I think there's a 5, and there's a 5B, and I really don't know or care what the differences are in them. Uh, they're all kind of fun to use. Um, I believe it has to do with self-timer, but again, correct me in the comments if I am wrong. There was actually a Fed 6, and the only reason I know this is because I looked it up on the internet, and if it's on the internet, it must be true, right? Uh, but anyway, um, I think it was Camerapedia or something says there was a Fed 6, another thing I can link in the show notes, uh, that had TTL metering, um, which actually was never produced but designed around or prototyped around the year 2000. So. Feds haven't been gone for long, actually, which is kind of interesting to me. But anyway, uh, Russian cameras, fun stuff. Um, you can find these, like I said, on eBay pretty easily. They're nice alternatives to something like a Leica. They're nothing like a, like a Leica. That's weird to say. They really aren't, and uh, even a vintage Leica. Um, Leicas and the, the German cameras in general from that time period were far superior than anything else ever being built. Uh, but the war forced uh, importing to stop into various countries. So therefore, copies were made of things, and that holds true even for the U.S. Uh, with TLR design. But uh, if you're looking for something uh, that's kind of fun to collect, not very expensive, uh, and kind of fun to go shoot on, and I will say that these cameras are always fun conversation pieces. Uh, you show up with a group of friends with one of these and everybody asks what the heck you're shooting on because it's got Cyrillic on it and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so anyway, all that to say, that's feds. And uh, like I said, tomorrow's vlog will probably be dual purposed so the iTunes folks know that we're doing a vlog. And uh, you know, again, in the comments, tell me if you wanna see stuff. I'm happy to go through my weird camera collection of, of strange things. Um, you know, uh, it's been kind of a fun break from the, the regular podcast and there's never a shortage of things to talk about. I've got some other subjects I want to cover on here too. I'm not supposed to be planning this because it's supposed to be off the cuff, but I also want it to stay photography related. And uh, somebody had asked me about the decisive moment and I thought that might be a fun one to do uh, as well. So anyway, but more camera stuff today and uh, I thought you guys might get a kick out of seeing those. Um, I'm, I'm still stunned that you guys think I have a camera closet when really it's just a plastic bin over there that these kind of live in. Um, I haven't shot on them in a long time and uh, no particular reason other than I'm, like I said, I'm more interested in, in what I'm thinking than what I'm shooting on these days. So I will opt for a more convenient camera. And if you're shooting professionally, um, these are really not very practical, but they're a lot of fun to use. So that is the Russian feds and somebody correct me if it's F-E-D and not Fed, uh, or if there's a different way of pronouncing it, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, check out eBay if you're interested in finding some of those. Sometimes you have to pay for shipping, but you know you can, you can find them fairly easily, and like I said, they rarely cost much. So anyway, all rangefinder cameras, all fun. Once again, this has been the Art of Photography vlog edition. And uh, thanks again for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you want to see on here. This, is, uh, this has been fun to finally interact with people and start a discussion because I'm doing these so often. Um, and it's been, it's been a cool week, so we'll see you tomorrow. Um, anyway, well, I've already closed it. We'll see you tomorrow. I need a sign-off. Like, uh, anybody ever watch the Tom Snyder show? He always used to say something like, fire up a color teeny or something like that. Anyway, we'll do that another time. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Later.